We're here today at Chad and Susie Chances at CSC Ranches and home of Hoof Watch. We're in conjunction, we're doing a series of videos and this happens to be for Harriman, Utah where Judge is Justin Fry. We're making some shoes for the individual class and they're made out of concave. We're making a wedge shoe, a degree shoe, out of 16 inches of 3 eighths by 3 quarter and we're going to fold and weld it to produce our wedge and still have the aesthetics of a concave shoe that would get into the ground. The shoe measures five and an eighth wide by five and a, five inches long with a toe clip uh, punched up for six E4 slims. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a graduated shoe. We're gonna have uh, a degree, two, three degrees of a wedge. We're trying to keep our concave edges, which is uh, a fuller end down the center with a concave inside edge and we're welding it on the back side with a toe clip. We're gonna make a graduated, probably a, a two or three degree wedge. To get this material, you have a dilemma. Are you gonna bump material to get your size or are you gonna fold and weld? Uh, I think it's managing how much damage you do to the section. So I've marked, I've come to the conclusion that two and an eighth and two and an eighth is what I'm gonna fold under and make my wedge. That gives me an 11 and three quarter inch shoe to build the size shoe that I need to make to emulate the judge's specimen. Just cut it. I wanna to get towards that bottom of it. There we go. And then I'll come up here. What that'll do is just make it to where I don't have to do as much forging on it to get that crease to come out of there. You want to get it down to paper thin so you don't damage everything trying to get that scarf in there. Get another heat, you can see I'm starting to form my wedge. And then just kind of come over the top. What you gotta do before you weld it, I'm gonna take one heat and kind of close up this, make me a nice heel on there real quick. And that'll give me enough overall heat, I can, I can flux it and weld it. The reason that you want to do this before you weld, as you can see, it kind of torques that wedge. So I'm doing a lot of this closing up beforehand. Close up the end of that stock, and then we're ready to weld. I'm gonna get the back of the wedge, and then slowly come forward. You can see it grow, and then I'll pull the tip together. Get all that tip together, all put together, come down the sides. Oh yeah. And then just, Close up my heel. As you can see after my first welding heat, you can see I really haven't done that much damage to my section. Come in here and just kind of get that heel set up. Less work in the rasping if you can get that heel kind of brought over a little bit. 
it kind of heightens it to where you can flatten it. We'll do the other side. You can see my wedge starting. And I do this, so I've got a whole heat to, to forge the heel and to put my flux on it. All right, we're gonna start at the back and then just slowly pull your hammer towards you and then put the end in. Just kind of focus on getting that in. Go all the way around the side. Once it cools down a bit, you don't want to focus on that scarf because you could pop that scarf because there's not much material there. I got half inch tongs, which they fit kind of thick. I'm just going to make my toe bend as, as loose as possible. because everything's going to want to push in the toe. So then I can just come here. What makes this hard is that these, these branches are hard to hold on to, so you want to try and get your toe done as quickly as possible. So now I have a safe place hold on to it in the toe. Come in here and you can see I'm just going to come and hit the outside edge here and just slowly taper off the outside edge. That's going to start the beginning of my wedge. Because I slowly push this down, I'm not going to flatten here and then I'm going to increase flattening right about here because that's where I'm going to have a lump. Just going to kind of clean up my outside heel before I can't get to it again with a hammer. And I'm going to start a little different because the wedge will tend to kink the quarter way up in the toe. So the wedge, I'm going to do it down here because now I don't have all of my material bottlenecked up into the tip of the toe. And now I can just come back and then just bend this all around. So then I'll come hit the toe and then right here is where I got to flatten it out, right behind where that wedge starts. Again, stay out here because all that thickness is going to push the, the bend up into the toe. So stay back here and then slowly go up. You can see I don't have it, so it's a piece of cake to fix that. I, all I got to do is come around and Again, hit the toe, skip right in here, and come right to there to create your wedge. I've got just, this heel has just ever so slightly, I've just got it coming down just a little bit, so now whenever I T-square it up, I have a little bit more material on my lateral side. widest part of the foot, even a little bit farther forward because a wedge heel shoe would have the bridge, you'd have to cut a little bit more of the heel off to make the wedge go on so your bridge is going to be a little bit farther forward in a, in a shoe, any kind of an Arab toe weight, any kind of shoe that's meant to have a wedge or a build up in the back is definitely going to have the bridge farther forward in it. Run that back edge ever so slightly. We've already got our toenail set up for us.
outside edge, skip over right about here and pick it up right about here again and make the wedge. Clean up that bit. If you hit the top edge, it just collapses. So to get your flow and to get the frog eyes out, hit that edge that's connected to the opposing side. Get me a good edge. Focus on where I want to hit. Just what I like to do is you hold the shoe to where the opening's away from you because my clip is still leaning. And now with your hammer drawing back to you, you tend to do less hammer damage to your clip, but yet you can clean up right around the edge of it. So I can come right back to it with my hammer and clean up right to the edge and not inflict any damage on the clip itself. Ever so slightly, go right through the toe clip and then go away from the widest part of the foot. widest part of the foot and bring it on around. Just open that up. Just kind of touching both sides and now I'll accelerate the hammer blow and come down with more force. And rasp it up. This is one of those things that this vice is created for was a completely nasty surface that's uneven. Those jaws can grab a hold of it. Just kind of cleaning it up. Bring it on in. This nice fine wire brush to get all the stuff out of the bottom of the fuller end. And then just kind of come in here in the toe and just flatten it up. There we go.